planet Earth, according to many scientists, is roughly 4 billion years old, give or take a few million years. By 200 million years ago, dinosaurs walked the surface of the Earth, and by 65 million years ago, they were extinct. Two million years ago, man who walks upright was appearing on the scene. In the beginning, man was not much different than any of the other animals who lived in constant fear, hunted by the great predators of the time. But about two million years ago, something special happened. Man began making tools and weapons. Then, as he learned how to cooperate within the tribe, to organize the hunt and to defend his family and plant crops, the first traces of civilization began to appear. And of the early civilizations, there was one that redefined the word empire, and in the process, spread its influence across Europe, Asia, Africa, and even time itself. It was Imperial Rome. Unlike China, Greece, and Egypt, Rome is not a country today. But the city of Rome remains as the capital of Italy, located in southern Europe. With just over 116,000 square miles of land, the boot-shaped country is about the size of the state of Nevada. Jutting southward from the European continent, the Italian peninsula is surrounded by the Adriatic Sea to the east, the Ionian Sea to the south, and the Tyrrhenian Sea to the west. Italy shares its northern border with the countries of France, Switzerland, Austria, and Slovenia. The presence of Neolithic or Stone Age man on the Italian peninsula dates back as far as 2000 BCE or before the Common Era. Migrating south out of northern Europe, many hunter-gatherer tribes who shared a common Latin language settled along the western coast of Italy. The area's rich soil and the ease of cultivating crops rapidly transformed them from hunters and gatherers into farmers and herders. There are no traces of towns in the area until about 1200 BCE. Greek historians attributed the rise of cities in the region to refugees from Troy, who fled to the west coast of Italy after the fall of that Asia Minor city to the Greeks in 1250 BCE. Their story was told in the epic poem The Aeneid, written over a thousand years later by Virgil, a Roman writer whose style was very similar to the Greek poet Homer. Aeneas was the son of the goddess Venus, who helped him and a band of followers escape the destruction of Troy. After wandering the Mediterranean for over a decade, Aeneas landed on the coast of Italy and his descendants became the Roman people. Legendary tales aside, artifacts confirm that the seafaring Greeks founded many colonies in southern Italy and on the island of Sicily. Before the domination of the Italian peninsula by Rome, it was first the domain of a culture called the Etruscans. They were primarily located in the region of Italy known today as Tuscany. Etruscan cities were similar to Greek city-states. They were independent, but all shared a common religion and economic interests. Many of the novel ideas originally thought to be Roman were actually handed down to them from the Etruscans. The aqueduct, a means of moving water from one location to another, thought to be a Roman creation, was entirely Etruscan in its origin. The revolutionary Roman arch that took architecture to a new level was first used by the Etruscans. Another Etruscan tradition had men fighting to the death at the funerals of great kings and nobles. The Romans would eventually take it to extremes. It developed into the gladiatorial contest staged on a grand scale known simply as the Games. In the year 1000 BCE, a tribe known as the Italica had built a series of villages on the summits of the seven hills overlooking the Tiber River. In the year 753 BCE, the seven villages banded together and became known as the city of Roma. The traditional Roman tale of the city's founding is somewhat more mythical. It tells of the twins Romulus and Remus, who were cast adrift in a basket on the Tiber River by a wicked step-uncle. 
Miraculously, they were saved by a female wolf, who nursed them to adulthood. Once grown, they founded the city of Rome, but an argument about where to build the first wall led to a fight in which Romulus killed his brother Remus. The new city of Rome prospered, and as it did, the Etruscans desired to control it. In the year 616 BCE, they succeeded in taking Rome and placing an Etruscan king on the throne. During the 106 years of Etruscan rule, the dusty little agricultural town was transformed into a major center of trade and commerce, graced with beautiful stone buildings and many temples. The Roman Etruscan community was divided into two classes of people, the rich, known as the patricians, and the working class, known as the plebeians. The last of the Etruscan kings was removed from power in the year 510 BCE by Lucius Junius Brutus, recognized as the father of the Roman Republic. Having seen the evils of rule by tyrant kings, Lucius Brutus designed a new type of government called Respublica, a Latin word that translates to a matter for the people. And thus the Republic of Rome was born in 509 BCE. Power was now in the hands of two elected officials known as consuls. Still very much like kings, the consuls were the heads of government and the generals of the army. The two of them had to agree on all decisions and they only held office for a term of one year. Unfortunately, all was not equal in Rome. The plebeian class could vote, but its members were not allowed to hold office. Initially, the new Roman state was friendly to its neighbors, but that ended when Rome conquered the Etruscan capital city of Veii, 20 miles to the north. This event marked the beginning of Roman expansion, and within 250 years, it would be the greatest empire on earth. By 275 BCE, Rome had won control of the entire Italian peninsula south of the Po River Valley. With the conquest of the Italian peninsula completed, Rome had become, in essence, a world power. This fact did not go unnoticed by the other reigning superpower in the western Mediterranean, the Phoenician city-state of Carthage. Founded in 850 BCE at the tip of present-day Tunisia, Carthage controlled all the land from Egypt to what is today Spain. Separated from Rome by a mere 350 miles of water, a clash of these two titans was inevitable. When Carthage instituted a naval blockade in the Strait of Messina, which separates the island of Sicily from the Italian peninsula, Rome declared war. The Latin word for Phoenicia was Punic, and so it became known as the Punic War. While Phoenicians of Carthage relied on a superb fleet of warships to ensure her power, Rome tied its fortunes to its amazing army. With highly skilled commanders and innovative new weapons and tactics, the legions of Rome were a highly efficient force. But as Rome prepared to battle Carthage in 264 BCE, it realized it too would have to build a navy. By studying the design of a captured Carthaginian ship, the Romans built 140 exact copies in just 60 days. Seeking a way to take advantage of their army's fighting skills in a sea battle, Roman engineers designed a secret weapon. Known as the crow, it was a gangplank with a spike on the end. The usual naval tactic of the day was to sink enemy ships by ramming them. But when an opponent attempted to ram a Roman ship, the crow would drop and secure it. Then the superior Roman army would rush across the gangplank and take the ship in hand-to-hand -hand combat. When first confronted by the new Roman fleet at the Battle of Mylae in 260 BCE, the Carthaginians were eager to fight However, by the end of the day, they had lost 50 ships and, even worse, the battle. Four years later, the greatest naval battle of ancient times was fought off the west coast of Sicily. When 350 Carthaginian ships clashed with 330 war galleys from Rome, it resulted in another loss for Carthage. Brimming with fresh confidence after their naval victory, 
the Romans attempted to end the war by invading Africa and marching directly upon Carthage. But now it was Rome's turn to be surprised. Carthage had hired the war-loving Spartans from Greece to fight for them, and the Roman army was quickly defeated. The First Punic War lasted another 14 years before Rome finally triumphed in 241 BCE. In addition to the island of Sicily, the spoils of war also added the islands of Sardinia and Corsica to Rome's fast-growing empire. Even with its loss in the First Punic War, Carthage was still a power and maintained numerous colonies in Spain. In the year 221 BCE, a 25-year-old general named Hannibal Barcara became commander of the Carthaginian army. Burning with desire for vengeance, Hannibal planned a surprise attack on Rome. In one of the most unexpected military maneuvers of ancient times, Hannibal, in 218 BCE, led an army of 40,000 men and 37 war elephants across the towering snow-covered Alps and shocked the Romans by attacking them in northern Italy. Although he lost 14,000 men in the Alps, Hannibal encouraged cities previously conquered by Rome to join him, and soon his army swelled to 50,000. One Roman army after another fell to Hannibal's brilliant tactics as he moved south down the peninsula. In 216 BCE, Hannibal completely destroyed an army of 50,000 men at the Battle of Cannae in southern Italy. It was the worst military defeat in Roman history. Unfortunately, following his victory at Cannae, Hannibal did not have the necessary support or equipment to successfully attack the city of Rome. For ten long years, Hannibal pillaged Italy. He destroyed 400 Roman towns and killed 300,000 Roman citizens, while waiting for reinforcements and support that never came from Carthage. During this time, Rome slowly recovered and rebuilt its army. Then, under the leadership of Consul Publius Cornelius Scipio, Rome was ready to strike, but not at Hannibal in Italy. Rather, it chose to invade Africa. In 204 BCE, Scipio landed just 25 miles north of Carthage and began to pillage their countryside. Hannibal was forced to return from Italy, and by 202 BCE, the stage was set for the decisive battle of the Second Punic War. Oddly enough, the two generals, who admired each other greatly, agreed to meet face to face to talk the night before the battle. Hannibal and Scipio spoke at length, but could find no resolution to their differences. At the Battle of Zama, fought the next day, Scipio won a resounding victory, and Hannibal suffered the first defeat of his career, thereby ending the Second Punic War. Scipio let Hannibal live. However, the Roman Senate soon feared that had been a mistake and called for his arrest. Hannibal initially escaped, but in 183 BCE, he took his own life by drinking the poison hemlock before the Romans could arrest him. Because it needed war tribute from the Phoenicians in order to refill its depleted treasury, Rome chose not to destroy Carthage after the Second Punic War. But in light of the damage inflicted on Roman towns by Hannibal during his invasion, many Romans felt Carthage too should be left in ruins. Their feelings were fueled by Roman consul Cato the Elder, who ended every speech he gave, no matter what the subject, with the words, Carthage must be destroyed. Finally, in 148 BCE, the Roman army invaded Africa with a force of 80,000 soldiers and laid siege to Carthage. Although it fought valiantly, Carthage fell in 146 BCE and the city was burned to the ground in a fire that lasted 17 days. All Carthaginians not killed were sold into slavery. Then the Romans covered the ground with salt so nothing would grow and forbade anyone from building there ever again. And so it was that Carthage, a city and a culture that existed for over 700 years, was wiped off the face of the earth. That same year, Rome annexed Greece and Macedonia. 
From its founding in 753 BCE, Rome had grown from seven hilltop villages to an empire that stretched from the Pillars of Hercules to the Black Sea. Rome was a highly organized and innovative society whose citizens believed they were destined to rule the world. But in timelines of ancient civilizations, the Romans part two, we'll see who ruled the Romans. And we'll meet the man who put an end to the Roman Republic and began the age of the Caesars.